We said in the last video that if an n by n matrix has n different eigenvalues, it's diagonalizable. But what if it doesn't? Well, the somewhat unsatisfying answer is that it depends. It might be diagonalizable or it might not. Let's try to diagonalize this matrix. Finding the characteristic polynomial and the roots of the characteristic polynomial, we will do off screen. This matrix only has two eigenvalues, one and negative two. Let's look for eigenvectors. And this I'll show in a little more detail. Call this A. So we want A minus one I times V equals zero. We set up and solve an equation. We do Gauss-Jordan elimination on the appropriate augmented matrix A minus one I augmented with the zero vector. And when we do the Gauss-Jordan elimination, we get this. And now we'll get our eigenvector from this. V1 equals V3. V2 equals negative V3. We don't have an equation for V3, but it certainly equals itself. So V equals V3, times this. Any value of V3 other than zero will give us an eigenvector. We will let V3 be one, I think, to make this our eigenvector. And now we're done with this eigenvalue, because if we let V3 be some other number, like if we let V3 be one half, we would get a second eigenvector, but the second eigenvector we got would be a linear multiple of this. It wouldn't be linearly independent. And we need three linearly independent eigenvectors. So let's move on to the second eigenvalue, which was negative two. And look at a plus two i times v equals zero. We solve this once again using Gauss-Jordan elimination on the augmented matrix A plus two I augmented with zero. And the Gauss-Jordan elimination
gives us this. So once again, let's turn this into a solution. V1 is negative V2 minus V3. V2 is a free variable. We don't have an equation for it, but we can buffer in this trivial equation. V3 is a free variable. We don't have an equation, but we can buffer in this trivial equation. And from this, we find that V, the eigenvectors, are V2 times this vector plus V3 times this vector. And aside from letting V2 and V3 both be zero, any values of V2 and V3 give you eigenvectors. So in particular, if we let V3 be zero, V2 be one, this is an eigenvector. And if we let V2 be zero, V3 be one, this is an eigenvector. And these eigenvectors are linearly independent. We talked about this when we talked about null spaces. These vectors are a basis of the null space of A plus 2i. And as basis vectors, they must be linearly independent. So, even though we only had two eigenvalues, we've got in three linearly independent eigenvectors. And that's all we need for the diagonalization. So let's create P. And let's create D. We'll let this eigenvector be the first column of P. This eigenvector came from this eigenvalue. Now this eigenvector will be the second column of P. I mean, order doesn't matter. We could let this be the second column just as well, but let's let this be the second column. And this eigenvector comes from negative two. So here's our second column of D. We'll finish out P with this eigenvector. And this eigenvector also came from negative two. So, When we finish out D, negative two is showing up. 
twice on the diagonal. And here's our diagonalization, or at least here's P and D. We normally don't bother writing down P inverse. 